Hey guys, what do you get when you chop wood faster than you can stack it? A backlog. On with the show! Welcome back to Creatures, Covers, and Crafting. Today I've got some XPS foam in front of me. And I've already cut these down to about 2 inches. A little less than 2 inches. And the width I'm going for is about an inch. Uh, maybe a little bit over an inch. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to make ourselves some vending machines for the post-apocalypse. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drawing out some lines here. And what we want is first we want the... Uh, return for the uh, merchandise that you purchase and we're also going to carve out a window here I'm just going to use a regular ballpoint pen to do this and I'm just kind of free eyeing this guy so don't get too hung up on being completely straight uh, but you should be able to do pretty well if you've got something like a popsicle stick here or maybe even a, a small ruler and if you goof up, don't worry, we're going to cut some of this out, so it's not like you can't go back over it. And we're just going to line up the return with the window. Give everything that nice symmetry. Connect it like so and then we're just going to finish off the top here awesome so that's what we should start with and we're just going to go ahead and cut these out so my technique for doing this is to just cut around the edges with a utility knife and then I just take a pair of pliers and I start pulling these away from the edges. Uh, it's important to do that because if you don't you could snag those and cause a little bit of damage um, which is a little hard to repair. Uh, you may have to start over uh, or you could just have battle damage vending machines. When we're done carving everything out it should look something kind of like this. Now we're going to just add a little bit of Mod Podge let this dry and then we're just going to go ahead and give this a nice prime in this case I used a red and now I'm just going to add some chipboard I took from a package and we're just going to black out those vacant areas especially the return in the window I'm just going to do a real quick image search and try to find something that fits really well with our vending machine I'm just going to use Microsoft paint to kind of size that down and then we're just going to print this out now what I want to do is pick the best image that I can and I want to put this on the uh, vending machine. If you don't want to go this route, if you're good with a brush or a pen, you might be able to draw in your logo. Um, I'm just going to do this because it's easy. Uh, what we're going to do is take some Elmer's glue and put this down and we're just going to put our image on like so. And we're just going to start putting the glue on top of it. Of course we're just going to go all around the edges of this and we want to kind of make sure uh, that it is straight. I use Elmer's glue because uh, you will have a little bit of functionality with it uh, when it comes to moving it uh, and straightening it up. If you use something like super glue you're not going to be able to do that. And as you can see I'm just going to demonstrate that here and we can wipe off the excess if we want and just allow that to dry it will dry clear i have one on the back here just get this and as you can see it looks perfect next i recommend adding a base uh, you could use a washer i'm going to use a standard 28 millimeter base just because i have so many of them if you don't do this you can easily knock this over so just my suggestion so next I'm going to go ahead and cut another piece out. And this is going to go as the backdrop for the window of the vending machine. And just to give this a little strength so we can fit it in, I'm just going to take a little bit of cardstock. Uh, this came off of a package. And I'm just going to put that on with some Elmer's glue. I'm going to take the uh, backdrop and fit it in like so. And now we're going to take a piece of clear plastic. Again, this just came from a package and I've just cut it to the size of the window. We're going to take a little bit of super glue here and we're going to run it up on top. This had a little bit of a curvature to it 
So I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm just going to put it on the top like so. And we're just going to fit this in. So we're going to also use a little bit of cardstock just to shore things up a little bit. Um, if you've got some rough edges with the uh, window or if things look a little uneven, uh, you can easily hide that with that cardstock. So guys, just as an option, I'm going to take a page from Tabletop Witchcraft and I'm going to take these diodes and I'm just going to put a hole in one of the vending machines that I'm making here. I'm doing this just so I can kind of size it up. Of course, I'm going to use the 28 millimeter base and I've poked some holes. These uh, leads will go through those holes. And to bend this, all we're going to do is just use those pliers from before. Um, this will make your bends a whole lot easier. As you see, I'm just kind of pressing up. Sorry, I lost a little focus. I'll zoom back in for you guys. Uh, but that's kind of what you want to go for. And of course, we're going to do uh, two more folds. Uh, those will go into the uh, actual base. I'll go ahead and do it again for you. And when you're doing this, you may have to play around a little bit. Um, I had to kind of uh, guesstimate where I wanted the holes at on the base. But it's not a real big deal. And when you buy these, uh, you get a pack of 200. So you should be fine. Uh, then you're just going to put these leads in the base, like I said before. And of course, we're going to secure the vending machine down to a 28 millimeter base. I'm going to add a little bit of smoke effects. And I didn't need a lot, so I'm just going to pull some from a Q-tip. We're just going to kind of pull this apart, get it nice and thin at the top. And then, of course, we will fit this in just to kind of get a reference of where we want to put it. And what I'm thinking is I may hit this with a little bit of black just to uh, smoke it up a little bit. And here we have it secured inside with some glue. Next, we're going to add a glass window. And this is just another piece of plastic packaging that we're tearing into bits. We'll take a little bit of super glue and put that all together. And here we have our vending machine put together. Notice I put a out of order sign. Um, and here's the leads at the bottom. I just wanted to show you how this works. We're just going to take our battery and we're just going to fit it in like so. It should fit very snug. And again, this is not my idea. This came from Tabletop Witchcraft, so I give all credit to him. And of course, it will stay in there. When you put it on the ground, you'll be fine. And uh, sorry I don't have the light off, but you can still see the LED working and you can simply remove the battery when you're done with it. Let's go and take a look at all of these on the table now. And here we have our final project. Thoughts on this? This was a quick and simple build. It used very little materials. In fact, I'm using most of the scrap left over from the Epic C Diorama build. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll put it at the end of this. I wanted to show you guys a variety of different options you could do in these photos just to get you in the creative zone. You can be as detail oriented as possible. Uh, you could really just spend hours and just creating different types of vending machines. I think these look great on the table. They're kind of like an eye candy. Uh, also, they add a little bit of comedic relief. You could use these for scatter terrain, objective markers, or just put them in the background just to add a little flavor. As far as the diodes go, if you want to take that route, I would highly recommend that you go check out Tabletop Witchcraft's build. I'm going to link that video in the comments below. He also has an affiliated store where you can get those diodes. It doesn't jack up the price or anything. If anything, it just puts a few cents back to his pocket and allow him to continue to make those epic builds as always. Guys, I'll leave you with a video for the end. Thanks. <laughs> Hey craft family thanks for stopping by if you like the video give me a thumbs up if you haven't already maybe think about subscribing i really could use some more subscribers hey and if you've already subscribed you're awesome but anyways guys thanks for stopping by share this with someone that might like this type of craft anyone that might be doing post-apocalyptic wasteland games send them this way you guys stay safe we'll catch you next week
goodbye.